Hello, hello, Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to this week's episode of the Weather Report for the Actualization Zone. If you're not a part of the Actualization Zone on Facebook and you're listening on or watching on YouTube, head over to Facebook, type in the Actualization Zone into the search bar, and we will come right up. You're welcome to join us if you are an intelligent, intuitive leader and you're ready to create a new world for yourself and for other people as well. I am your guide and your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and I'm so happy to be here with you. If you are watching live, say hello in the comments. And if you're watching the recording, let me know, and I'll stop back in here and say hi back to you as well. Well, I'm coming from a different location today. We make our exodus, as so many Arizonans do, from the heat of the desert to the cool, fresh, beautiful environment of the West Coast in California. So that's where I'm broadcasting this week and next week too, I guess. So I'm here with my husband and my dog Cooper. They're downstairs. I'm hoping that they will continue to be quiet as I as I record this this weather report today. But we'll see. You know, you never know life being what it is. So I was walking Cooper down by the beach today and it was such a great morning to just have the reminder that abundance is all around us, all around us. And when I was tuning in last night to see what was going on with the weather this this week, I used Colette Baron reeds Animal Oracle. I think it's called that. The Spirit Animal Oracle. And I think I also used one of the, yeah, I did one of the Starseed Oracle cards from Rebecca Campbell. So that'll be an interesting combination of cards that we're going to be using today to just tune in. You know, the weather report for me isn't so much about predicting what's going to happen in the future, but it's just looking at what are the energetics at play this week and how can we leverage them in order to be able to master the things that we are meant to be mastering this week in order to contribute in the way that we're meant to be contributing this week and really ultimately in order to feel the most aligned, most healthy, most fullest expression of ourselves or most actualized expression of ourselves. That's the intention of it. So here we go. Let's dive in, see what the, see what they have to say today. So the first one I pulled is Panther Spirit. And we've seen this one before in the actualization zone. This is, I think, a common theme for leaders who are powerful who are confident. The world has a tendency to tell us to tone it down, to turn it down to that you're too much, that you're too big. And what I know to be true in all the work that I've done personally and professionally over the past 20 years since I've been doing this work is that anytime I contract, anytime I contract, anytime I'm not in my full power, that's when I don't feel very good. It's when I feel disconnected from my intuition, disconnected from my source. And I think maybe that's the point, actually, of the world telling you you need to be small and be good and be seen and not heard and all of those other niceties that we've heard throughout our lives is that when we're like that, we're not fully connected. So this power card, take back your power card, is really a reminder to reconnect reconnect with your heart, reconnect with your highest level of consciousness, reconnect with source, spirit, God, and um, operate from that place. So your connection is the most important thing this week. Cultivate, nurture your connection. And let me see if there's anything else for this card. Sometimes we're afraid of our own power. Marianne Williamson is attributed with saying that it's not the darkness that we fear, but our own light. I'm not sure that that's the case, but I do know that one of the things that we need to rally around is the, just the reclamation of our personal power, our personal decision-making, taking responsibility, full responsibility for our decisions, our choices. If our, if our lives seem like they're lagging or stagnant, taking responsibility for that too taking responsibility for that. Maybe you say you want something, but maybe your attention is placed elsewhere. Maybe you have under-prioritized 
your most deeply held goals and dreams and over-prioritized other people's. And it's just as time to flip the script on that. And reclaiming your power is really, I believe, the first step in actualizing what those deepest goals and dreams are. So reclaim your power this week. The way that I do that, by the way, is to sit quietly and reconnect. Find a quiet place. I know it's not always easy to do, but one of the other cards that's going to be coming up this week is around boundaries. So I think that's really interesting is that our power needs a container. Our power needs a place to sit in and to move through. And the boundaries, that's this, um, that's this card right here from the, the um, Starseed Oracle, to surrender to the sweetness and to also create the boundaries that are necessary in order to surrender in order to reclaim your power, in order to allow the power to course through you. You've got to have the boundaries to do that. All right. Next card is Bobcat. Oh, no, sorry. Next cat is Rabbit Spirit. The rabbit. I'm at the beach, and there are beach rabbits. They eat pizza that people have discarded. I don't know. I think it's cute. But um, maybe it's lucky for them, too, because this card is all about this is a lucky time. This is a lucky time and luck starts with you and it starts in your perception. It starts in your perspective. So if you can remove the shields from your eyes and if you make a decision to look at the most optimistic, the most and highest possible pathway this week, today's going to be a lucky day. This week is going to be a lucky week. And if you tell yourself that, even when things kind of go sideways, even when things don't seem to be as lucky as you might expect them to be or want them to be, when you shift your perspective just a little bit, you can kind of create your own luck. And your own luck starts by asking, how is this happening for me instead of how is this happening to me? That's how you start your own luck. How is this happening for me? And that creates or generates curiosity. It asks your intellect to start problem solving from the perspective of how is this happening for me? What's the solution to whatever's gone sideways? There's a solution to every problem. So what's the solution? But all of that, if you just go back for a second to what I originally said, now is a lucky time. It's not luck that comes from outside of you either. I like that saying, you make your own luck. It's probably better to say you co-create your own luck. But this is an opportunity for you to just shift your perspective and make a decision. This is going to be a lucky week. See, all of these cards are indicators. They're, they're just ways that I believe that are unconscious, that spirit speaks to us. And... It starts, if you want to really access it, it starts by making the decision to do so. So you really can't go in with a level of skepticism. You have to go in with a level of discernment, of course. But the skepticism, you can leave that at the door this week if you decide to follow these, follow these guideposts. All right, next one is Bobcat Spirit. Yay, Bobcat Spirit. Life is a mystery. And when I pulled this card, I was like, okay, what's, what does that mean in the context of reclaiming your power and that this is going, this is a lucky time for us? Well, I think that what the intellect often will do is make a decision on how we're meant to be lucky or what luck looks like. But when we remember that we're co-creating our lives with divine consciousness, then we have to also take the opportunity to surrender to the fact that life is a mystery. And sometimes things don't work out the way that we would imagine them or the way, the way that we would want them to work out. And that's when it becomes so important to, to drop back into perspective, which is how is this happening for me? And when we get into agreement that life is happening for me and that life is also a mystery, then we can be surprised when things work out even better than we could have hoped for or imagined. If you really want to curate your life, 
if you really want to have the experience of making the contributions that you're here to make and mastering the things that you're here to master and having fun and being in joy, enjoying your life while you're here, really understanding that your intellect plays such a small part in where you're headed. Of course, we need the intellect, but it's meant to be the faithful servant, not the, not the sacred gift. The intuition is a sacred gift. And the intuition knows life is a mystery. So the more you can move with your intuition, the more that you can move with this, this understanding that life is a mystery, the easier it is for you to get into that slipstream. You know, the slipstream is the fastest stream. When you, can, when you can get into the slipstream of life, things just move for you. It starts with a decision. It starts with a decision. Lastly, y'all, you know how much I love how life is a mystery. So this one, as we're talking about co-creating with the divine, well, here we go. Here's koala spirit. And can you see what that says? Spirit has a plan. Spirit has a plan. I grew up Catholic. I there are parts of the Bible that I really appreciate and one of the one of the verses in the Bible is God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in a future. And I have to tell you that that is that's resonates with me so much in the hard times in the dark nights in the in the times when we're looking at the world and saying what is going on here to affirm that spirit has a plan. God has a plan. And it refers back to life is a mystery. So when we are in full surrender to our divine and eternal consciousness, that part of us that lives on forever, that is fully connected to the creator of the universe, when we're in, when we're in full surrender to that aspect of ourselves, that's when we can start to see the plan unfolding. And that's also the best time for us to be able to say, I don't know. I'm so curious to see what happens next. And to be okay in the not knowing. The intellect, not so okay in the not knowing. And I'm not saying disregard your intellect fully. Certainly we need the intellect to be discerning. But we also need, the intellect actually needs to have jobs to do. One job that it's not the intellects to do is to imagine. It's not the intellect's job to decide how things are going to go, actually. But instead, to partner with Source and to co create, to conduct, to see what happens, to be curious, those are the jobs of the intellect. If your intellect chooses to accept them. All right. The guides are saying one more card. Oh, let's do this over here. You know, this comes from another deck. You're getting all the decks today. This one is from the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle. This is one of my favorite de decks. Um, and the one that we pulled last night, actually, too, is the Abundance card. This is Smoky Amazonite. Smoky Amazonite. So it's a reminder, a reminder that we are living in an abundant universe. You only need to look outside your door and to see what's going on, to be able to see the abundance of the universe. And it's not always that we're able to, because if our, if our eyes are shielded or if we're not feeling our best, it's easy to see the opposite of that. But this is just reassurance and a message that, the universe is abundant. So you can kind of feel that activating in your brain, even as I say that, can't you? All right. So that is our weather report for this week. If you found it helpful, leave your comments and let me know. I always appreciate that because that helps me help you. And I hope that you'll join me over in the actualization zone on Facebook and join a growing group of leaders who are activating and aligning with their intuition and leaning into their greatest hopes and dreams. I'll see you over there.